you may be asking yourself, when do we use integration when it comes to physics? And a great example is when we talk about the first law of thermodynamics, which states that the change in energy is equivalent to the heat minus the work. And the work is actually equivalent to the negative integral of P dV. And here we have on our left the PV diagram. As we can see, the pressure is dependent on the volume. We know that the integral is essentially the limit as delta x approaches zero of the, of the sum i equals 1 to n of f of i x delta x. So we know that this is the area of a rectangle essentially. And you're essentially taking the area of almost an infinite amount of rectangles which have a width of almost zero. The reason you're doing that is because we know that if we know the area of a rectangle, which is the base times the height, then if we have an infinite amount of rectangles, then that will give us the best approximation of the area under the curve. But in order to do that, in order to decrease the area of the rectangle, we need to either decrease the base or the height. The height here is actually dependent and is, actually, and is the pressure at any given volume. And so the thing that we're changing is the base. The base is going to be the volume. The volume is the base. So if we have here a rectangle, we see that our volume, more specifically our change in volume, is going to be the base. All right, so now let's calculate some work. Let's say we choose this adiabatic process, and we know that the work is equivalent to the negative integral of PdV. Let's say we're going from A to B. So we're essentially going to try to find the area under this part of the curve. So as we can see here, with the curve, the pressure changes. Therefore, let's actually change pressure and write it in terms of volume. Based on the ideal gas law, we know that PV equals to nRT. Let's rearrange for P. We get nRT over V. And let's plug this right in there. So now work becomes negative integral nRT over V dV. That we can take out our constants. It's going to give us negative nRT integral of 1 over V dV. And let's, again, let's define our lower and upper limits. So going from A to B, I'm going to write it here and here. So now a property of integrals is that the integral of 1 over x, or in this case 1 over v, dv, is going to be equal to the natural log of v. So what we're going to do, it's going to be negative nRT times natural log of v from the lower limit to the upper limit. You're going to now plug this in here and then subtract it from the subtract the upper limit from the lower limit. You're going to have negative nRT multiplied by natural log B minus natural log of A. Now a property of natural logs or logs in general is that whenever you have B over B minus A, natural log B minus natural log of A, that is the same thing as the fraction of the two. So your work is going to become negative nRT times the natural log of B over A. And that is your final answer. And now we can actually write this in terms of Vf and Vi. If A is equal to Vi and B is equal to Vf, let's just substitute it in. And you get that work is equivalent to negative nRT times the natural log of Vf over Vi. Now let's do the same thing for isothermal. That's going to be here. And as we can see again, pressure depends on volume. It'll, be, it'll change based on the volume. So we know that work is equivalent to the negative integral of P dV. Since we know that pressure is going to be changing with volume, let's write P in terms of V. Again, we know that P is equal to nRT over V. Work is then going to become negative integral 
NRT over V, DV. Let's indicate our lower and upper limit, A to B. So work is going to be equal to the negative, take out our constants, NRT, integral from A to B, 1 over V, DV. Looks awfully familiar. Going to give us negative NRT times the natural log of V going from A to B. Plug this in, then subtract from when this is plugged in. You're going to get that work is equivalent to negative NRT natural log of B minus natural log of A. Again, you can actually rearrange this into B over A. So your work is going to become negative NRT natural log of B over A. And that is the work for an isothermal process. And as you can see, this equation for work is exactly the same as the equation for an adiabatic process. Now again for this one, getting from point A to point B, if point A is VI and point B is VF, substituting it in, we get work is equivalent to negative NRT natural log of VF over VI. All right, let's take a look now at an isobaric process. For an isobaric process, again, the formula is work is equal to a negative integral of PDV. But now for an isobaric process, we see that P is actually going to remain constant regardless of V. Therefore, since P is constant, and as we do for integrals, we're going to take the constant out. So the work is actually going to become the negative P integral of DV. And now, we can write P in terms based off our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. In terms of V, P is going to be equal to NRT over V. So we're going to have work is equivalent to negative NRT over V integral of DV. Now integral of DV is actually going to be V. Let's go lower limit to upper limit. This will give us the negative NRT over V times V, upper limit B, lower limit A, subtract upper limit from lower limit. You're going to get negative NRT over V times B minus A. Now, once again, substituting VI and VF we get that work is equivalent to the negative NRT over V, VF minus VI. And if you notice, something interesting happens. For an isobaric process, it's essentially a rectangle since pressure is constant. So we know that this is pressure and this here is essentially the width of the rectangle. And you can see it here perfectly with the rectangle right there and our pressure is going to be our height and for those of you wondering this v is the initial volume so now let's look at an isovolumetric example we know that work is equal to the negative integral of pdv and we know that the integral means that it's the area under the curve and if this is our isovolumetric change we can see that we literally have nothing under the curve. There's no area under the curve. So if there's no area under the curve, the integral will be zero. Another way to look at it is that we're taking the integral of P with changing volume. If volume doesn't change, this is going to be zero. And so again, the integral will be zero. But now let's say we didn't realize this at first and let's actually work it out. Let's say we're going from an integral from V1 
to v2. Well, here we can see again, v1 is going to be equal to v2. Therefore, we can just write v. Therefore, we can just write v1 to v1. And again, you realize that if you're taking an integral from one spot to the exact same spot, you're not going to have any area under the curve, and work will be zero. Actually, working it out, we know that pressure is going to be changing. So let's write that in terms of volume. Based on our ideal gas law, PB equals nRT. P is equal to nRT over V. Plug this right in. Work is equal to the integral of negative integral of nRT over V dV. Missing a negative there. Okay. So now, take out your constants. You're going to be left with work is equal to negative nRT integral 1 over V dV. Now again, we're going from V1 to V1. Integral of 1 over V is going to be natural log. So work is going to be equal to negative nRT natural log of V from V1 to V1. It's going to give you negative nRT of natural log of V1 minus natural log of V1. This you already know is going to be 0. But let's go a bit further. Work is equal to negative nRT natural log of V1 over V1. It's going to give you negative nRT natural log of 1. And the natural log of 1 is 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is ultimately 0. So we know that our work in an isovolumetric case is 0.